welcome to my floss tube channel, Thread the Needle. My name is Bonnie and I'm from Newfoundland, Canada. It is uh, still summer, the weather is beautiful, um, albeit a little bit windy, but we're, we're used to that. Um, and so I have been getting a little bit of stitching in and I wanted to thank everyone out there who, after my last video and I was saying how sometimes I'm not getting in as much stitching time, and I wanted to spend a little bit of family time. You all were so lovely in your comments to say that it's okay to take a little bit of family time, that I don't always have to have something to show you guys. And I truly appreciate all the love that you sent my way. So for those of you who it's your first time here or you're very new to my channel, as I said, my name is Bonnie and this is my floss tube channel where I enthusiastically speak about my love for cross stitch, my love for full coverage cross stitch. And uh, so let's jump right in. I have a lot of works and progresses. And since I don't have a lot of um, updated progress to show you from the last video, I do have a little bit and I have an exciting little bit to show you, but because I didn't have a lot, I thought that this video as requested by one of my viewers, I do a little bit of a whip parade. Who doesn't love a midsummer whip parade? So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's jump right in and show you the progress that I have made so far on some of my projects. Um, I do have those three focus pieces that I kind of like to concentrate on this year. However, these last two weeks, I only concentrated on one of them. It was just the way that it worked out and the mood I was in. I was so focused on this piece and I wanted to get done. But before I do that, let me show you um, the result of my daily 100 from the um, month of July. So I was able to use the World Travel Bookshelf for my daily 100 and for the month of July and it's a fabulous way to get some good progress done on a project. I have been doing it for, this is the second month now, and August will be the third month that I have picked a project to do my daily 100 on. Basically, it means that I pick one project and for the month, whatever month that I select, every day I have to do 100 stitches on that one given project before I move on to whatever project fits my mood or whatever project falls on my random project picking wheel. And it has been a fantastic idea. I am so glad that I started doing this. And the month of July was World Travel Bookshelf. I'm stitching it on 25 count, one over one full cross. And here is the progress after the month of July. Okay, I got completed this whole column here and was able to start the next section and make it my way down a little bit here. So here's how much I have done on that and it's just such a joy to stitch on because I find a lot of the time in projects like this, full coverage projects, um, there's just so much detail that you don't really know until you step away from the project and you've, you realize what you have been stitching on. Like here it is, this is how much I've done. As you can see, Right there, that's the section that I'm working on. And I just love the color and the detail and everything that's coming out of it. It is always such a joy to stitch on and I always enjoy it. So I just love all the little details that pop out, even in a small section, which is uh, the best part of it. Now, the next project that I worked on, I actually picked a random project to work on, is Mini Avarice as part of the Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, Heaven and Earth Designs. I'm doing it two over one on 22 count fabric. So, and here is how much I've got done there. Let's see if you can focus in there. Right, so I think it's coming out really nicely. Um, as you can see, we've got the beginnings of the arch around her. It's going to look Fabulous. I always have so much fun when I work on this one because I'm just super excited about what's coming next. So I just want to stitch and stitch and stitch to get to the next part, which always continues because I always want to get to the next part. And I'm always so enthusiastic about wanting to get right in there and 
keep going and get to the next part because it's so exciting when details like that start showing up, right? That's the arch. So exciting. Now, the next part I have to show you is the Cross Stitch Studios Mystery Cell. I have been laboring on this for a while, as you know, and I was doing a really good job. Oh, I don't know if I accidentally showed you what I was working on, but I was doing a good job of keeping on top of it and until, you know, this page really stumped me. It was just taking me a long time to get through that little log of mess of stitches, but I finally did it. Then I moved on to the very next page and I was already behind. I'm already behind a couple of months. I think there's, um, after the page that I show you, show you that I'm working on, there's another, there's already two other pages out. So I'm way behind and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. It is what it is and it'll eventually get done. However, you guys, I have been working feverishly on this page and I finished it. Look at that face. It is complete. Doesn't that feel like you could just pet and it would be so soft and smooth. Oh, it just looks so good. So here is what it is. Let's see if I can hold that up. There we go. So here is what I have so far on our mystery stitch along. I think it is coming along fabulously. I got so excited towards the end of this page and I was like, you can do it, you can do it. You're so close. You just have a few hundred stitches to go. Go on, you can do it. And I did it, all right? This, it, this page took me a long time. It stumped me a little bit because there's so much confetti and which is why I switched over to um, cross country stitching on this page, which I found so much easier to deal with. I don't know about you guys, how you cross country stitchers out there, how you do it. But for me, how I do it is once I select a symbol on Pattern Keeper, I actually map out my stitching. So if, let's just say, I was gonna pick one of the dark browns in there and I would look on Pattern Keeper on my app and I'd say, oh, okay, so it's here and here and here, or maybe I should show it here. So it's here and here and here. So I'll decide before I thread my needle if I want to, okay, let's start here, go down here, bring the needle up there, and then come down here. And so I always do that no matter what, especially only when I'm doing cross country stitching, I'll map my stitches out so that I know where I'm going, where I need to be, how much floss I have. I wanna use the floss, floss that I have efficiently so that I, ha I have to rethread less frequently. And it works. Um, I find I'm a much quicker stitcher when I'm cross country stitching. That's not to say that my other methods are, don't work as well because they do, obviously, because I'm still doing them. But for this one in particular, because I wanted it to go really fast, I did cross country stitching on this page. Um, the next page is, um, I think there's, oh no, I'm three pages behind. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, I think, I don't know if this one, anyway, this one and this one are out for sure. Um, I think this page came out for the month of August. I don't know. I should count how many pages there are. I have no clue. But I was just so excited that this guy has got a face for the most part um, and really excited to go on to the next one. So page finish. Yay! Now, on to the fun part of the video. Today's going to be a bit of a short video um, as I have just a few things to show you. That's all the progress I have. However, I always still had lots of fun doing it and I, I just love it so much. So I am kind of looking forward to, I'm gonna show you how many works in progresses I have. Many of you are gonna be shocked out there because I know a lot of you are one project at a time or just a handful at a time. I'm not. I have so many works in progresses and don't even get me started on how many charts I actually own because I'm a collector. I may not finish these charts in my lifetime, but I'm a collector. I collect the charts. And you know, um, it is what it is. I just love that I own these charts and that there is the possibility that I may at some point work on them. I may not, I may, who knows? 
They're mine. I can do with them what I want. I can stitch them or I can just stare at them. It's all good. Now, let's start the whip parade. We're gonna start with the regulars, all right? So we've got the um, lovely Siamese Fighting Fish by Anita on uh, one stipple, two stitch on Etsy. And it's coming along great. I have to continue and persevere and get on. I think it's, I think it's the 28 count that stumps me sometimes. I kind of have to get in the groove and kind of, it stalls me sometimes, but I really have to get in the groove and just put my mind to it and get it because I love it. Once I actually pick it up and start stitching on it, it is a joy to stitch and I think it's going to be fabulous. I'm, I try not to think about how much fabric I have left. We won't think about that. We'll just think about how much that I have done and concentrate on how much progress I've made because it is, I think it's going to be beautiful. So thanks Anita. Um, and then of course we have our old regular Ganesha, which I already showed you last time in its entirety, but I'm going to show you again because it's one of my favorite pieces because it's so beautiful and the colors are just so me. So here's Ganesha, right? And it's just so beautiful, so beautiful. So this one again, I'm doing um, the cross country diagonal method. It is my preferred method. That's what I like to stitch. Now, let's see. Uh, now what pieces, some I've put everything in there in my pile to show you guys. Uh, I don't know if you can see the pile in the corner right there. This is how high it is. Now, the next piece is I mixed my UFOs and my uh, all my whips in there. So there, you're going to get a little bit of everything, okay? So we've got Mini Dragon Charmer. This was a piece that I started a long time ago, did a little bit, and then put it away. So here she is. You can't really tell much. You'll have to look up most of these because I don't have pictures of them uh, ready to show you, but this is Mini Dragon Charmer by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, I don't think I have a picture of it anywhere on any of my pieces. Hmm. No, no, I don't, sorry. Uh, but it's Heaven and Earth Designs, I think all of the ones I'm going to show you are Heaven Earth Designs. The only non-Heaven Earth Designs that I'm doing at the moment, is, I've already showed you. It was the Siamese Fighting Fish and the uh, Mystery Cell. So the rest are Hyads, Hades, Hyads. I don't even know how you pronounce it. I call them Heaven Earth Designs because why Why bother shortening them when I can just say the whole thing. So this is Mini Dragon Charmer, UFO number one. Next, um, we have seen in the past already, it is Life is an Open Book. London and this is how much I have got done also a lovely piece that I really enjoy working on and I was doing it cross-country and then I switched over and I'm doing it cross-country diagonal now so I like that one next we have one of my new starts it is QS Sapphire and I've got just the itty bitty corner done just there I've got, I've got a lot of stuff with blue in it, don't I? All right, the next one is uh, Ayana, again, by Heaven and Earth Designs. I'm gonna stop saying that because they're all Heaven and Earth Designs. This one, so I only have the little corner with actual work in it. The rest is black. That's a lot of black. So I've really started to look seri think seriously about getting a black DMC cone and more of the common dark colors. Um, Let's see what how we go about that. Now, next is Autumn Owl Trio, a fun piece to work on. I've only got half of one owl done and there's still the rest of the trio to go, but still enjoying it very, very much, very much. Okay, then we have Peacock Fantasy, because I love peacocks because I love all the peacock colors, the blues, the greens, purples, the pinks, all of it. So here's how much we've got done so far. This one took me a while when I did pick it up a couple of times when it came in my rotation. This little fan section here took forever, but it's done now. And then next comes the fun stuff. 
Next is Mini Opening Night. This is the ballet dancer, which I think is absolutely beautiful. And here we go. This is how much I have done. Again, I am doing this um, diagonal cross country stitching. Lots of fun. Oh, and this is one of my favorites. This one is um, Enchanted Garden. I absolutely adore her. She is, has come out so beautifully in such a small stitched area. The amount of detail that has come out, the daisy chain crown, the flowers in her hair, the blush on her cheeks, her, her face, her shoulder. I love it all, all of it. I'm, I adore it. I, I can't get enough of it. Beautiful, beautiful. Then we have another UFO that was put away for quite a long time. It's um, Prelude to a Kiss and it deserves to come out. So here, I already had two pages done before I uh, put it away as a UFO. So the last time I picked it up, I had done just this little bit here as, actually no, it was like, one and 90% of the page done. So I finished filling in this and then I added all these stitches in. So that's where I am with Prelude to a Kiss. Then we have um, Little Dreamer's Tree. We all know the saga that I went through with that one and having to restart it, but it's done. Um, here's restarting it. I just got the top two done there. This one I am Let's just say I'm calling it cross country across rows and we'll see how that goes for that. But I think that's going to be still a lot of fun to stitch. And then this one, I get so much joy out of stitching this one whenever it pops up in my rotation and I have been using it for my demo videos. So it's been a super, super fun. It's mini moose crossing and that you will see that the amount of detail that has come out in just that little corner of stitching is fabulous. I absolutely love it. This is mini moose crossing. Um, then oh, we're getting down in the pile now. Then I have a very small start on Sunflower B. Really looking forward to getting some more stuff done on this one and kind of getting closer to the action, the actual flower and the bee. That's going to be lots of fun. And then another one of my favorites. This is uh, Golden Promises. Okay. This is a big one because I decided to do it on 18 count and it is a regular size project, not a mini or a QS or anything. So it's quite big because I'm doing it on. But here she is. I love the colors. They're not my usual um, dark colors that I like to stitch on, but still so much fun. And I'm really enjoying the section that I'm working on now. I did, I was doing it cross country when it, when it became a UFO, but then I've converted it into diagonal cross country stitching. And it seems to be working well. I really love, love, love working on that one. Then we have the Christmas in July project that I decided to start with Leanne and I believe our hashtag is F C Christmas Sal. So full coverage Christmas Sal. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But uh, I decided to do this is all I've got done there. Oh, there you go. If I tilted that way you can see it. So I decided to do this as a extreme cross country stitch. I've decided that I wanted to try extreme cross country and where the project is not humongous, I thought it was a manageable project to decide to do that on. So, so far so good. It's, it's happening. We'll see how it goes. Last but not least. Now, the only reason I'm telling you about this one um, this next project has been a UFO for a long time now. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure my husband's not going to watch this video so I can talk about it. 
Uh, it is a project that I had commissioned. I gave it to a Heather and Earth Designs. I gave them a picture of my husband and I, and this is pre-children, so we were very young, and I asked it to be converted into cross-stitch, and uh, they did, and I got back the chart, and I started it, and then I put it away. I'm, I believe it's on 28 count, which is not my favorite count to stitch, but I generally pick that for larger projects because then they'll be smaller. And so it's been a, put away for a long time, but this year we celebrated our 21st anniversary. So I'm hoping that if I bring it out again, work on it consistently, I might have a chance of finishing it for our 25th anniversary. That is the plan. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I, I, I really wanted to do this and I don't know if it'll happen. We both celebrated our birthdays this past weekend. Mine was on Saturday, his was on Sunday. And so it just reminded me that I had this project and I'm like, I should really try and, and pull this out for him and finish it and maybe we can hang it up in our home. Uh, so why don't I show you what it's um, going to look like. Now, I remind you, I'm very young in this picture. Uh, it was a long time ago. And let's see, we look like babies. I mean, honestly, okay? So this is what it is. Now, I started it a while ago, but I actually didn't get a whole lot done. Now the fabric I chose, let's see if you can I don't know if you can see, there you go. It's got a little bit of marbling to it. It's really nice. And so I chose that because I didn't want to do stitch all the white background, so I'm not gonna. And I think this is the top of his head. <laughs> That's all I've got done. So I have a long, long, long way to go. But I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I actually got it done and was able to, you know, give it to him for our 25th anniversary? I thought that would be kind of fun. I figured that gives me enough time. We've got, we've got four years, right? I mean, I want to think it's possible, so we'll give it a go. So, you guys, I want to say thank you for joining me today. It has been a blast. Um, I know it was a shorter video today, but I'm glad that I was able to show you all my uh, whips. So you're welcome for the midsummer whip parade. Uh, I hope you got some nice eye candy and uh, you get a better glimpse of my tastes and what I like to work on. Um, it is a bit of a variety, isn't it? One thing I, I do want to know, uh, what I think I'm going to try and think about, is I need a new whip rotation schedule idea. I, I do still like my three um, feature projects, but I want to be able to touch more of these whips because they all are so important to me. They all have different meaning to me and they all, I just want to work on all of them. So if any of you have any ideas on, on the rotation, I work on, I like to do these videos every two weeks. This summer, I already told you it might take longer for the next one, but um, I want another, because sometimes I think my problem is that I don't want to show you anything until I actually have a good bit of progress on it, but you know what? 100 stitches is 100 stitches, so if it's only 100 stitches, I can still show it, can I? You may or may not be able to see the difference, but if a whip gets worked on more often, then eventually you will see the difference. Um, so maybe that's it. Every time um, I'll do my three regular projects, and then every day I'll do a different one, and a few hundred stitches, and that should be enough. I don't know. I think I was doing that at the beginning of the year. For some reason I changed it because I wasn't getting enough progress done on a particular project. Maybe I just have to go back to it. Um, so something to think about. I think I'm going to have to change my method. You guys will get used to this. I change my mind all the time on how I work on projects, which projects I'm working on. Uh, I have a short attention span, so my interests will change all the time. Um, and sometimes I just won't be in the mood to stitch on the project that the wheel picks for me. And you know what? That's okay. I'll just spin it again until it lands on a project that I feel like, oh, yes, I totally want to stitch on that one. So it's not all set in stone. So if anybody has any ideas, go ahead. Let me know.
And uh, otherwise, until next time, it has been a wonderful hanging out with you guys for these uh, few 20 minutes or so. And I can't wait to come back uh, into the next video. And I promise I'll have more to show you because I'm hoping to come up with a new whip plan. Shall we say? I think, uh, yeah, I, I really need some fresh idea to kind of get my interest into all these projects again. But it has been a wonderful time. Thanks for joining me again. And uh, thanks for returning, you guys, and watching and commenting and uh, just being here with me. Um, have a wonderful day. Happy stitching. Bye now.